Hello, Knights. Uh, I want to take a time to uh, create a quick video showing you guys how to create a Google Meet, how to share the link for the Google Meet with your class, as well as um, some of the features that Google Meets offers and how it can be beneficial when we have to do virtual instruction for a possible inclement weather day. Um, there's been plenty of updates to Google Meets. Uh, I'm also going to be sharing with you a resource that I've created. I'll either link it below, um, and I'm also going to put it in our Schoology group. So let's jump right into it. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is show how to access Google Meets. So the first thing I like to do is I normally just Google search Google Meets and select the first option. Uh, now, in order for this to work, you need to make sure you are logged into your Google account. So up here, notice, I click on here, brings up my BCPS account, and make sure the sync is on. Once you've done that, you need to type in uh, the Google Meets code. Now, Parkville High School does have a Google Meets um, style that we like to use. Um, it is, I'm going to type it out generically, and then I'm going to type out mine as an example. So the generic is PHS, followed by your department, followed by your teacher name. So, with no spaces. So again, PHS, department name, teacher name. Now, the example for my class would be PHS. Math or mathematics, we have to discuss that as a team, what we're going to be using. Math and Chodakal. Now, what's nice is the kids can use this to join your meeting once it's been created. So we hit join. Now, it'll get everything ready here. Now, it's going to be a little weird because it's going to try and prioritize using the camera that I'm currently using to record myself for this video. Um, so I'm going to see if I can kind of switch some things around without really confusing it. Now you'll notice down here it gives you a whole bunch of options before you get started. You can select your camera. I'm going to switch to my uh, other camera here, which will probably, oh, there we go. See, that's pretty cool. Two, two cameras. Um, so we got this set up. You can do things like blur out your background. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now uh, because it's a pretty heavy load on your system. Um, and I'm not really ashamed of my background, so I'm not too worried about it, but you absolutely can do that. You can also kind of put some cool things behind you if you're working from home and you don't want to see. Maybe you're in your laundry room and it's a little messy, um, or your cat's jumping around in the background and you want to have something else up there. That's perfectly fine. So you can adjust that here with the visual effects. Here you can adjust your microphone. You'll notice I have a number of different microphones here. Uh, you can adjust the output of the speaker. Sometimes I use ear headphones, so make sure you're setting that up here. And you can also test your speakers as well. Um, once you have done that and you have everything ready, you can hit join. So it's going to take, again, a little bit of time for this to load. So now, remember, your students can log into this any number of different ways. They can go in and go where they just were and put in this code to join. Now, what I would recommend doing, because sometimes that's a little challenging for students, is actually just sharing the link. You can share the link of your Google Meet by selecting from the, the bar above, or you can use this down here. I'm going to use this because this is how I normally do it. So you can copy this link, and then we're going to go to our school, go to a Schoology page, whatever class you're teaching. So I'm going to go to my Geometry page once this kind of loads up. And I'm going to show you how you can share the link directly with your students in the way that I tend to do it. Because, again, it has been some time since some students have uh, accessed Google Meet. So I try to make this as accessible as possible for them, as well as providing multiple means for them to access this material. So, again, it's going to take a little time just because the system load is quite heavy. So I'm going to be selecting the class I'm going to be sharing this with. This would be for my geometry class. And then the way that I tend to do it is I like to put it at the very top. So you can hit this little plus sign at the top or add materials. I'm going to hit this little plus sign. 
And I like to add, you can add it as a number of different ways. You can add it as a link. Um, you can add it as a page. I like to add it as a page. That way the students can see kind of what is attached to it and ju just not it being a link. But plenty of teachers use it as a link too. So if you're creating a page, again, it's going to take a little time for this to load. We can call this, I normally like to use the day's date. Today's date is the 28th, 2, 28, Google Meet link. And then you can just type in a brief message, please use the link below to access our Google Meet at, and whatever time it's going to be. I'm going to say, 11, 15. Uh, it's going to be dependent upon what class you have, and Miss Astorita will share our schedule with everyone. You can either drop it directly in here, and the students can use that, or you can actually put an inline link in here. So put, you can put in a link. I'm going to put in the URL, text to display, Google Meet. Boom. And then they can click right on this to access your class. So I'm going to hit Create. And what you'll notice is, uh, again, once it takes a little time, this Google Meet, they can click right on this. And it will take them, and they can select this link right here. So I like to use a page. Again, you also can use um, just a link. Perfectly fine. Some teachers like to use that as an option. To do that, let me just delete this real fast. That way my class doesn't get confused. Add materials. You can add file, link, or external tool. Select link. You're going to put in that link that you copied from your Google Meet from right up here. Google meet link and again put in the date and I would also put in the time but again very helpful here and then you just hit add so that way you can see how both of them look and you can decide what's going to be best for you and your students here so it looks like hit add material boom it's right here now when you hit add material it puts it all the way at the bottom know that you can you can grab this and move it to the top if you want to I would recommend doing that because if it's right at the top, then the students are going to be much more uh, inclined to see it. Because sometimes they just don't know to look all the way at the bottom. So that's two ways that you can share your links with your students. I'm just going to delete that again so it doesn't confuse my class. So let's look a little bit at Google Meets itself. Uh, we can go over some of the features that you can use. Uh, some of the newer things that I think are quite great. Let me see if I can move this up here. Let's move me up here. So here's the instance out of the way. I'm going to kind of show you a brief workflow how I like to use this. Uh, for my class, what I like to share my screen. So you can hit the Present Now button. And I'm actually going to see if I can turn this off right now. Save me a little sleep. So when you hit this Present Now, it's going to give you several options. You can present Chrome tabs. Notice at the top of my page, I have all these tabs. This is a great option um, if you YouTube video or any multimedia that uses sound. If you're going to be using sound, you need to present with a tab. Now, most of the time, I'm not presenting videos. I'm using my own voice to kind of annotate or go along with what we're learning. So I like to use the entire screen. So there is a benefit to a tab. Like I said, you can select a tab that way. Like I said, if you have a YouTube video on there, you can share it. If, if you're going to be using Kahoot and you want the sound from Kahoot, because I think the kids like the music to that, also an option. Uh, but again, I like to use entire screen. Now, I have a two-board setup or a two-monitor setup. So the one that I'm presenting on, you can see is screen two. So I'm going to select screen one right here. Now, notice it says to share audio, share a tab or screen instead. So I like to use the tab for that. So notice I'll hit share.
and notice it shares the my entire screen which right now is a Canva document that I'm working on to go along with this. It's all about Google Meets. Now I hit ignore at the top so it looks cleaner. Um, and sometimes it'll ask you some things about sharing and not sharing. You don't need to worry about that. I'm going to hit hide there. So the nice thing is I can adjust things on this other screen and the students can see it in real time. I can open up additional tabs and I don't need to worry about switching tabs. So I could switch this open. Um, I could pull off a Word document and have people look at a Word document. Um, I could pull up an Excel document and have an Excel come up. Whatever tool you need to use, you could pull up and the students can see it in real time. So you could pull up a Desmos activity if you wanted to and the students could see it in real time, which I think is really uh, a great reason to use the share of the screen. Uh, another nice feature that you can use are, are listed over here. Um, we have things like the chat, this is great because students can use this chat to, one, ask you questions, um, which is great. It's a great way for you to interact with your students. It's also a great way for the students to interact with themselves. Um, another cool thing that they just added is what is called a pin feature. So if I drop something into the chat, let's say I have a link that I want the students to be at for the lesson, I can send them that link directly, so that way they don't need to navigate between Schoology and, Des or, and Google Meets. And then you can pin that. When something's pinned, it means no matter what time the students enter the Google Meet, they will see that message. If I type in something like, hello class, and a student doesn't come in until after that message, they won't see that. So sometimes it gets really annoying if students are rolling into class a little bit late and you have to keep dropping the same link over and over again. Um, it can kind of take away from instruction. So I recommend pinning any important links uh, to, uh, your, uh, to your chat. Uh, some other cool features, you, there are some activity features where you can do breakout rooms. Um, you can add polls. So that's like if you wanted to say, hey, guys, do you want to do activity X or activity Y? Or you could do some formative assessment saying, all right, guys, I put up four images here. Which one of these is the quadrilateral or each, which one of these is a parallelogram? You could have them use the poll. Um, there's some other cool features. There's whiteboarding. Um, this is for like brainstorming activities. I recommend experimenting with these, play with these, see which one works best for you and your needs in the classroom. Um, so again, this kind of covers some of our basics in terms of Google Meets. Again, I wanted to make sure I showed everyone some of the more recent updates to Google Meets. To, I wanted to show you guys how to share the Google Meets link with your students. Again, I would recommend, in fact, I'm going to make myself a little bit bigger here. I would recommend posting in your Schoology page the following. At the top of your page stating this is the join code, which would be PHS department name and sharing that specific link uh, for the day's class. That way it makes it as easy as possible for all students to join in the virtual instruction in the case of a inclement weather day. Um, if you have any questions about Google Meets, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Um, I have also created, I want to see if I can pull this over for everybody. Uh, I have created a a document, a Canva document that goes over all of this. Again, I will share this with you. Um, I'm going to see if I can pull it over. Like I said, it has a lot of important links as well as kind of sharing. Um, I guess I, oh, here we go. I'm just going to pull this over. Um, it shares the Innovation Hub resource, which is great. It has lots of different more recent updates on there. Uh, a cool sheet that you can share with your students for them to access it on their device or on their phone. Um, Google Meets Help Center. Um, there's also BCPS Live support on there. So please check out all of those. Those are all great options. Um, and there's some other really good links on here as well, too. I'm going to put the link for this video at the very, very top of the sheet. So that way, if you ever need to watch it and need to catch up, it'll be right there for you. So. I hope you guys found this video helpful. Um, and again, if you have any questions, please reach out to me. I would be glad to help in any way that I can. Have a wonderful rest of the day nights, and I'll talk to you later.